All right, so I wanted to kind of answer some common questions that I saw from Joshua Bardwell's recent video of the mini qubit, which is a uh, concept that I've been developing and working on. Um, that's actually the vehicle that I sent to him, and yeah, I just wanted to kind of answer some of the common questions I saw uh, in the YouTube video. So. Let me answer some of those right now. So first question, is the qubit an original idea? So this scale of the qubit, the quadrator biplane tail sitter, is, uh, I guess, new um, in the sense that the scale and the design of it is new and the way it uh, kind of comes together and the assembly of it and the way the wings come off and all that stuff, that's kind of new. Um, but the idea of adding two biplane wings to a quad rotor is not new. In fact, that was um, developed at UMD, University of Maryland, which is the school that I attend um, for my master's degree, and it was uh, developed way back in like 2012 um, by a guy named uh, Dr. Vikram Rishikishavan, and um, yeah, it, it's kind of grown from there, and there's different scales of the vehicle now. Uh, and the qubit that I made, the mini qubit, um, is kind of the first kind of hobby uh, level uh, quad rotor biplane uh, that's kind of int been introduced, I guess, to the market. So durability was a big thing uh, that Bardwell was talking about, um, and the kind of magnetic wing and nose cone mounts, and I guess some confusion as to why maybe you would go that route in terms of having this kind of modular uh, detachable mechanism with the wing and nose cone, um, instead of just having it like hard mounted, for instance. So. I think uh, the reasoning for why uh, you would want it to be hard mounted is so that you don't have to go pick up the parts every time that it crashes, but the downside to that is chances are there's going to be multiple parts, right? If you crash the thing and it's got these kind of wings on it that are built to be lightweight and you know maybe not the strongest thing in the world, then and you go and you crash it really hard. Uh, there's a chance that something's going to break, right? A uh, pretty high chance, in fact. If you were to crash an RC plane at the same scale, that's like a 250 gram airplane, and you crash it into the ground, it, chances are something's going to break on it, right? But with quad rotors, it's a little different, obviously, because they're carbon frames and they're really strong and they're built to crash. So the idea here with the magnetic mounts was to kind of take advantage of the quad rotor uh, uh, level of crashing where you can crash it and be sort of okay with it um, but take away some of that anxiety from crashing an airplane right so the problem though is that it is kind of an airplane right because it has wings so if those wings were to be hard mounted chances are that mount that connects the wing to the frame would break in some way so the idea here is that you choose that failure point by adding a magnetic mount so that you can actually absorb some of the energy in a crash and then have the wing pop off and then let the frame roll and tumble like a quad rotor would and ha leave the wings behind and so that you can just go out and you can pick up the wings and remount them. So, you know, maybe the wings in the nose cone could be fastened a little bit better maybe, um, but they still fall off so that, that maybe in a lighter crash they don't fall off as easily. But, you know, there's always room for improvement, so I kind of, uh, you know, I'm not going to totally uh, ignore this. Um, but I think where it's at right now is that, uh, you know, if you crash it, then chances are it'll be fine in general. Uh, it probably doesn't have quite the same strength as a normal quad rotor because it's a 3D printed frame. Um, it is a very stiff 3D printed frame because it's printed from carbon nylon. Um, but with that said, you know, crash an RC plane at the same scale uh, and it's not going to do quite as well as the mini qubit, I'll bet. So scalability. This is a great question too and definitely a good topic to kind of talk about. So the mini qubit is the smallest scale so far that we've developed in our lab, um, but there are other scales. Uh, we've developed scales that kind of range from like an 8 pound scale. And then we've gone all the way up to 20 pounds. The Army Research Lab has looked into it. Uh, Nicholas Rehm has a YouTube channel. He's a friend of mine. Um, he, he's made, I think, like a 7-inch version of it. Uh, and then there's also a VFS design competition, which is the Vertical Flight Society. And they 
kind of conceptually designed one that was much, much larger and can fit into like a cargo plane and deliver uh, cargo. Point is, yes, this is a very scalable concept and I think that's kind of cool, right? That we can explore this concept on a smaller scale and get to know it a lot better at that small scale and understand the flight dynamics, the aerodynamics and all sorts of things um, before we go to the much more expensive, much more risky, uh, larger scale. Add ailerons to the wings. So yeah, you could add ailerons to the wings. I think at this scale it's probably a bit tight, right? The wings are pretty small, so adding ailerons might be a little bit challenging, and they're not totally necessary either. Uh, the rotor uh, torque itself should provide enough uh, uh, torque in order to actually get the thing to roll in forward flight. Um, so ailerons would be cool, I'm sure it would be more maneuverable, but you know, the thing has a 6 to 1 thrust to weight ratio pretty much. So ailerons at this scale aren't super necessary. I will say that at a larger scale, um, variable RPM rotors aren't quite as responsive um, because you're spooling up a much more inertia, so it'll probably be better to add ailerons at a larger scale. Can you use the DJI camera system? Uh, in all honesty, I've never used a DJI uh, system before, the, the, uh, the Vista. Um, but from what I understand, you cannot uh, use it because there's no video switching uh, that's capable. There's no video switcher with that setup. So you need to use an analog uh, video, which is um, what I've been using. And this, that question kind of leads into this next question, which is uh, why not use a servo to change the camera tilt angle instead of using two cameras? So I think you could use a servo, and I think that would work fine. In fact, I think it'd be kind of cool, because you could uh, mix the um, uh, controls with the roll and yaw mixing into the camera tilt angle. So basically your controls would mix uh, relative to that servo tilt angle of the camera. Um, so your control inputs would be directly mapped to your video view, which would be kind of cool. Um, I think though the the purpose of this mini qubit was designed so that you could crash it and you'd be mostly okay if it crashed. Um, so if you were to add this, ser this servo and it's like a mechanism, it's got linkages and stuff, it's probably more likely to fail. Um, so the idea here was to just have a very simple two camera mechanism um, where there's no moving parts um, and you can just flip the view and Honestly, that works pretty well because most of the time you just look out of the top facing camera and you just use that forward facing camera to do your landings and takeoffs with. So, um, you know, a servo camera could work. Uh, that's one way of doing it, but the two camera system is kind of what I did. I think another really cool thing to do would be to actually blend the two cameras into one another. So basically you have two cameras and you like mix them together like a 360 camera would be mixed in like two different lenses together. Um, so that you could just do it via software and you don't actually need to use a servo to physically move a camera. You can just use two cameras which have the full range um, but kind of choose where you're viewing from within the two cameras. So anyway, just kind of a cool thing. I haven't looked into that yet but it might be cool to explore. Speed required in Ford flight. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, I guess Bardwell uh, likes to go fast but Essentially, you don't need to fly this thing quite that fast. Um, you can literally give just the smallest amount of like angle of attack on the wings and it'll slow down quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, the, the wings I sent him were, were meant for high speed flight um, because I figured that would be best for his type of flying style. But I am looking into high endurance wings, so stay tuned for that. They'll be more... Um, slower flying wings, so you won't be able to go quite as fast, but you should be able to fly much more efficiently at low speeds with those, so yeah, working on that still. Hopefully I can release those soon. So how does roll and yaw flip with orientation change? Uh, that's another good question, so essentially uh, in hover the, uh, you know, the, the roll turns into your yaw in forward flight, and your yaw in hover turns into your uh, roll in forward flight. And so I uh, do that mix using the FPV angle tilt mix in beta flight um, by just setting it to 90 degrees and then I set it to a mo in the modes tab so that when I flip to forward flight it'll do that mixing for me uh, within beta flight in the flight controller. 
An 18650 powered mini qubit. Yeah, I mean, this is totally something you could do. Um, so basically, this is talking about uh, using an 18650 cell uh, battery cell instead of the lithium polymer pack, which is what I'm using right now. But this guy on Rotor Builds, K Stone, uh, actually developed the Nano Qubit, which is a smaller variant of the mini qubit. And Kevin actually gave me uh, some design inputs and stuff for the v2 design which is currently on the website uh, but he was inspired by the mini qubit and he developed his own uh, smaller nano qubit and it's powered by an 18650 cell and he's got this thing flying and stuff so you can check that out as well in the in the description so can you buy a mini qubit that's ready to fly or plug and play um, not currently uh, I am a master student trying to graduate and I have research and other things so this is a bit of a side hustle for me for me right now but with that said I'm going to try to uh, release some ready to fly versions um, they'll be very very limited to quantity probably like five max to start off with and just try it out and see how it goes um, and so those will probably be released I don't know, within a, two months or a month or two? I don't know. Um, kind of depends on when the parts show up from China. <laughs> How long can it fly with and without wings, uh, aka a standard quadcopter? So this is a great question. It kind of alludes to the idea of a mission. So can a quad rotor with wings perform better in a mission compared to a quad rotor without wings? Um, so can we get higher range? Can we get higher endurance by adding wings to the quadcopter? This is a bit of a complicated question just because uh, it's not quite as simple as just adding wings to a quadcopter because there's some structural changes that can happen. By adding wings, uh, you essentially can uh, remove structural weight from the frame of the quadcopter, for instance. So it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, but if we were to uh, have two vehicles, uh, one with wings and one without wings, and they are both the same weight, uh, which one performs better? So I've actually looked into this. Uh, in fact, I went a step further and I wrote a whole research paper on this, uh, which is also linked down below. So we can actually look at a power versus airspeed plot, which shows uh, the, the three different wing configurations which I tested versus the, just the standard baseline quadcopter case, which is shown in black. Um, and so if we focus on this blue line, which is the, the most similar wing configuration uh, to the mini qubit, then we see that we actually have about um, you know a 10 watt power reduction uh, within this zero to 15 meter per second uh, flight. Uh, speeds. However, if, we're, if we go above that airspeed, then we actually consume uh, more power compared to the standard quadcopter, um, and that can kind of be attributed uh, to the to the reasoning. So basically, because um, there's additional drag that's produced by the wings, and so um, you know there's design compromises with everything in engineering, and this is kind of. Uh, one of, I guess, the design compromises with adding wings. But that's not to say it's a bad thing. Um, essentially, what it means is that you need to design the wings and the rotors, the, that kind of uh, mix between the two, um, to be uh, targeted for a specific flight uh, speed. So it all depends on your mission, right? If I have a mission where I need to go somewhere really fast and do it quickly and get there and then be done and, and don't hover for too long, uh, and don't fly slow for too long, but just fly fast for most of the time, then yeah, you can design a wing uh, which is most optimal for that higher flight speed. Um, but that will mean most likely that you're going to have a higher power draw and hover and in, at low speeds. Um, but that's okay because in the mission, you're spending most of your time at that high speed. And it's the same sense here with the, the, these wings and the way these are designed, um, is that kind of in this 0 to 15 meter per second range, if you have a vehicle that's uh, supposed to fly in that range, um, then you can, uh, th then the quadrotor biplane with wings is better uh, than the standard quadcopter um, in terms of flight range and endurance. This next plot shows uh, power versus airspeed again, but it shows uh, it for different wing areas. So um, essentially the idea here is that by increasing the wing area, you can produce more lift. And so in theory, it should uh, perform better at lower speeds. 
And in fact, we see that that's true. Um, so this blue line shows basically the biggest wing which was tested. Um, and we have a significant reduction in power compared to the standard quadcopter. Um, but again, it all depends on the uh, flight speed that you're targeting. So if I just want to fly uh, slow and for as long as I can, then you know maybe this wing is the best wing to use. Um, but you know, if you want to fly faster, then obviously the swing isn't great because you're not gonna perform nearly as well as just a standard quadcopter that range. So that's why like designing the wing for the application is is really critical to getting uh, the like peak performance from uh, the vehicle overall. There's a lot of research on this still going on within our lab um, as to you know which combination of rotor and wing is best for different applications and whether you can make this like spectrum of power draw um, versus airspeed a bit wider so that you know a, a wing can serve more missions with just the same wing. Um, and in fact, you can have morphing configurations, right? So you can have, uh, for instance, a span-wise opening wing or a morphing winglet in order to uh, basically uh, produce more lift uh, from the wing itself, and then you can cover a wider spectrum of the flight speed. So there's a lot of um, stuff to that uh, question, but I think that kind of covers that uh, as best as I can uh, in a short segment. So yeah, that kind of covers all of the questions that I saw that were, you know, common and interesting. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks to Joshua for doing a video review, I guess, of the Mini Qubit. Um, the main idea with the Mini Qubit and the purpose of it is to get this quad rotor biplane tail sitter concept out there a bit more. Um, I've been part of this like RC plane, RC quad copter community for a while. And when I first came to UMD and I saw this quad rotor biplane thing, I couldn't believe I hadn't seen it before, so the idea here is that maybe, you know, in five years from now or whatever, a student that shows up to the lab and sees the quad rotor biplane or sees the quad rotor biplane just in general will have seen it before in some way. And so hopefully the concept can grow through the power of the greater hobbyist community rather than just through the confines of our uh, research lab. So. That's kind of the, the general purpose. And there's a lot of really novel, um, really brilliant uh, people within this community. And so um, that's that would be great to see is if other people will start experimenting with the uh, quad order biplane tail sitter concept a bit more. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if you have any more questions, I'll answer them below, I guess. Cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.